begin. We just have Maxi to play around their cards here. Not playing in a Gamma. We're just gonna wait until they have a monster on the field. Then we're gonna be using that Maxi. Very nicely done. Now you could be asking, why not wait for them to activate and effect a special summon and also play around Gamma? Well, generally, they're gonna have a monster probably off of the field when they activate the Ash, maybe. Or you could just wait for the Poplar trigger here. We are gonna be setting up with the Divine Temple, getting the Flame Burst into the back row, making a Mascarina. It, that's it. it. This is what I believe you should be doing under Max C. Unfortunately, they drew three because we opened up with the one for one. But normally, if you just normal summon the Ash, it is a draw two for this field. And draw two for this field is pretty good because the Flame Burst will summon off of the opponent summoning anything. Generally, they're not going to have a way to deal with the field spell before that happens. And then we're going to be able to link up with the Mascarina and the Flame Burst uh, for some disruption. Better than ending on nothing. We also have the Impermanence. We have Effect Veiler. Let's go. Now, Unchained has a pretty cool turn, too. We are starting off with using up our normal summon here, triggering the Divine Temple to grab our Flame Burst from the back of the Special Summon. Now, this could be risky, using an Impermanence onto the Tour Guide. If they have one of any of the three copies of Shavar, which this card is limited to one in TCG, we could Chain Pop the Tour Guide, dodging the Impermanence, but we could still add an Effect Veiler on top of this to still negate the Tour Guide. Not that I'm saying that we should, but we could. We, uh, let's go, let's go, let's see what we're gonna do. Veiler, Veiler on top of the Impermanence in response to the Shavara Pop on the Tour Guide. That's it. It is going to be negated. It's now off the field, but it is still negated. Now, Shavar was a quick effect to flip it face down. It's a bit confusing. The effect veiler would be applied onto Tour Guide, then being flipped face down, it would then wipe off the effect veiler, and the Tour Guide would still go through. But leaving the field and being flipped face down is different. So, Tour Guide negated. We have Dark Contract with the Gate Mate searching for the Vice King Requiem. Another card that hard plays into Max C as it is a double special summon. We have Mascarina in response to the Requiem. We're going to be making a Unicorn. Unicorn on summon could discard a card to spin a card on the field. Back into the deck you go. Now, the Requiem was going to be summoning a 3000 attack monster that could pop any card in the field, including your own cards, to trigger some of your plays. Let's go, let's go. Oak is going to be channeling blocking the Ash from being negated by an Ash. You know, it's small little play there. You do want to be thinking about that. Ash, grab an Ash. Poplar trigger, grab a Subversion to be used next turn. Now, can Unchained Lethal? I think they can. Aruha popping the Unchained Escape, activating the summon from the deck, Abominable Unchained on summon, discard, oh, indestructible due to the Mascarina. So the main way to deal with the Unicorn is gonna have to be through, I would say the Anguish is a good card to link up with it. We have Yama. Yama is gonna be able to search our deck. Shavara is gonna be setting a trap from the deck, a different trap than the escape. We have the chamber. Very nicely done, grabbing the Rakea. Rakea can't be normal summoned here since we already used up that normal summon. Shiyama popped the trap to summon itself onto the field to summon from the deck, a Sarama. Now, there is a continuous spell we could have set from the deck instead of the chamber, and the continuous spell, if we were to link summon, would pop a card in the field, which could help lethal. We're gonna be using the Sarama to pop the Dark Contract, getting the escape onto the field here. As I said, Anguish would be the main way to deal with that indestructible unicorn as we are now using it linking it off into an Unchained Soul Rage. If we wanted to lethal damage, we would be summoning something like the Unchained Abomination. If a monster is destroyed, or anything's destroyed by card effect, you could then pop a card in the field. And then if you destroy a monster by battle, you could pop another card in the field. So and that is a really good way to get additional pops for that lethal damage. We have the Shayama popping our cards, then take out the back row field spell, just like that. So instead of some sort of lethal play that we're setting up, we're just setting up disruption for the next turn. Poplar equipping the Flame Burge. Let's go. What are our disruptions? Now, I was saying that if Unchained were to become a popular deck, that you're going to have to play Subversion. This is going to be needed to stop the Caesar from the double special summon negate. So if you were to, to perform a normal Snake Eyes play, if you're wondering if Unchained is good against Snake Eyes, they summon the Ash out of Poplar, Poplar gets negated by the Caesar, and then if they activate the Ash to special summon from the deck, it then double gets negated by the Caesar. So Caesar is great against Snake Eyes, but we got Subversion. Subversion will easily 
subvert it into the back row here, just like that. Push that full back. Now we have the Unchained Soul of Rage, which could link up with an opponent's monster that's special summoned. Not the Ash here. Ash, Ash, negate the Ash. Negate. We're gonna chain Wanted. We also have Escape, which could pop a card in the field. And do we have an Abominable in the Grave? So we could use the Rage or the Anguish if it is destroyed to grab back the Abominable Unchained. And then the Abominable Unchained will Special Summon if another card we control is destroyed. So we'll see, so far we just have two disruptions. Diablo Star, chain link blocking up the Flame Burge as it's reborning from the graveyard, setting up from the deck an original Sinful. Get special summoning. Let's go, let's go. We only have about two to three disruptions here. Oak is activating to summon from the grave or banishment back on the field, searching. Wait, you play more than one subversion? Or wait, you returned it back in the deck. What the hell? You can only activate one per turn though. Making a Nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Phoenix has a secret effect. The secret effect is draw an additional card. Now we're forcing the activation of the escape. Now a lot of you could be thinking, popping an Unchained card's a bad idea, right? Well, the escape when destroyed while face up, it's not gonna trigger. So we're, we are just forcing the activation and this was a good play. And the secret effect was draw an additional card if we don't get destroyed on resolution. And we have to be co-linked on resolution, which we're no longer. Droplet, dodge the pop of the escape of the Unchained. So what happens here is the escape, this is an interesting ruling. This says destroy both cards it's targeting, an unchained and a card in the field. If one of the cards are not there on the resolution of the escape, the other card's not destroyed. So if we really wanted to destroy the soul of the rage, it doesn't get destroyed. But if we instead had destruction protection through something like Mascarina, it will still attempt to destroy both cards and then the soul of rage would still be destroyed. But if the card's not there, it doesn't even destroy it. Is that uh, understandable? Wait, we still draw off of this? I wasn't sure of that. What? Discard a card, destroy it. Then if this card was co-linked, when the effect was activated. Wow, I mean, it's right in the text. If it was when activated, it was, you still get to draw. Okay, sure. Damn, I didn't know it was that good. Yama trigger off the of destruction to reborn the Abominable Unchained, which will discard a card on summon to pop a card in the field. Get popping. Unchained Soul of Shavara is going to be adding the Shavara. I should, yeah, add the Shavara. I should say the Rage is adding the Shavara and the Graver back to the hand, which could special summon during the opponent's turn by popping a card we control. Original Sinful summoning from the deck. Now, the Shavara is not going to be leading into disruption. The Abominable Unchained is generally the disruption we summon from the deck. So we're pretty much out of juice. Promethean Princess, Unicorn's different. Unicorn set has to be there on resolution still, unlike the Unicorn. <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't deal with this. We couldn't Flame Burst push it into the back row. What's up with that? Target a face up, did we already activate that effect? What happened there? He too big, 3,000 attack, ain't no way. Let's, no, time? Oh, he's running out of time. Oh my gosh. Abominable Chamber, Reborn from the Graveyard, Anguish. Anguish could link up with a monster the opponent controls. We're gonna link up with the Promethean Princess, which now gives them disruption through the princess being in the graveyard as we summon an Unchained Abominable. We're gonna be popping the Unchained Abomination, which is not gonna be resummoned unless we have a Yama in the graveyard, which we do not have. Okay. We're gonna chain Flame Burst to steal the High King Caesar, which has no effect. Zero. <laughs> Zero effect here, but if we could get the Caesar into the graveyard, through, into our graveyard, we could search for a dark contract. Shiyama's gonna pop the Aruha, which will trigger the Aruha to summon as the Shiyama is summoned from the grave. We're now gonna link this up into a Yama, which will search our deck for an unchained card. Unchained monster that is, we have used up our normal summon already. Shivara set a card into the back row. This is where if you have not used a card like your Aruha, you could add from the graveyard or deck. So if you're under the effect of Droll, this is where Yama's good to add from the graveyard. Aruha pop to then summon an Aruha from the deck to then link this up into an Underworld Goddess. Flame Burge is going to be negated by the Goddess. <laughs> Negate! Ain't no way, mate. Goddess is so good against Snake Eyes. If you're struggling against Snake Eyes and you could summon a Goddess, 
Goddess will be essentially, it will negate an Apollo USA. It will negate a Baron de Flore on the field. It will negate the Flame Burge activating in the graveyard. Baron de Flore and Apollo can't even negate the Goddess because it's unaffected. So she is just great against Snake Eyes. To battle, we go. Link Karibo is negated. Wipe out the field here. Trigger the High King Caesar, searching our deck for a dark contract with the gate. Let's get to it. Now, do you play another Caesar? Maybe you do. You do. Double Caesar in the extra deck here. Let's get to it. Very nicely done. So we have double special summon negate, special summon from the grave negate. And this is where I was talking about. The Caesar is great against Snake Eyes Ash, which maybe we're going to see. Original Sinful Spoils is going to be searching our deck for a Poplar. Poplar on add will activate, which will get negated by the Caesar mate. Caesar negate Poplar, Caesar negate the Ash summon from the deck. That's it. Wow. Let's take this into game number two. What an incredible duel here. Very well done. Yama being triggered off of a destruction to summon the Abominable to then pop a card in the field with some good disruption. Let's do it. Bonfire it up, which you could argue the deck now plays into a drone lockbird if they open up with Bonfire first. Triggering the pop art of special summon. We're waiting with the maxi because we do not want to get gamut here. But we got that double finger play. This is going to be a really difficult field to break. We have the Droplet, which is non-target Monster Negate. We have untargetable Baron to Floor. We're going to have untargetable Apollo USA. That's going to be about Negate, 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 Negate. And we have Promethean Princess Mate. It's about seven disruptions, and we're untargetable. How can we beat this? Let's go. Seven, seven, seven. Dark Contract to the Gate. We're going to be chaining, getting the Mascarina onto the field. Formula Synchron, while untargetable, is going to be Synchroing into our Baron to Floor. Mascarina also going to be untargetable as it makes its play to go into Apollo. Omni Negate is ready. Come forth, Mascarina, trigger the Flame Burge, summon, summon, summon. Bunch of summons here are going to happen. And the Chain Link Order does matter on what we choose to do here. We have Poplar and Oak activating. Well, okay, so we actually did not have regular Ash in addition to this. Summoning the Jet Sync on from the graveyard, now we can make a fat four material Apollo USA. We're gonna activate Mascarina where it looks like it's only three materials, but it's gonna be four because the Elf is gonna be stacked on top of the Mascarina, getting that fourth monster onto the field. Let's get to it. And as we said, seven disruption. Five disruption through the Apollo and Baron. Two disruption through the Droplet and the Promethean Princess. Let's get to it. The main out to Apollo is attacking over her, but the Link Rebo is also on the field, protecting her from being swung into. Dark Contract searching for the Requiem. Requiem's gonna pop the Dark Contract to summon. Now, the Requiem is threatening the ability to pop any card on the field, but it is a targeting effect. You have to target the card in the field to destroy it, and the Apollo and the Baron to Floor are not targetable anyway. But we're still going to get rid of the Requiem. We still do not want that. So we gave up the ability of being untargetable to get rid of the Requiem. Setting up with the escape of the Unchained. Apollo USA negate the Shavara. We now do not have an ability to pop the escape. Shiyama, as I said, sucks in the hand. That's why you only play one. You don't want to draw it in the hand. It does nothing. Let's hop in the next game. No more extensions, nothing else. Summon a Rhino from the deck. Rhino, when sent to the graveyard, will send a Shivara. And let's get to it. We have the ability to link up with a special summon, double special summon, negate, pop any card in the field. And we could, if we play this right, very easily summon an Abominable Unchained from the deck for a fifth disruption. Non-target pop a card in the field, by the way, non-target. And then on top of that, we have Imperm, we have Valor, we have Ash. So we have eight disruptions being helped with hand traps. Can we play through it? And uh, Maxi, which is not really a disruption, but it's gonna be funny for them to play through it. Imperm, negate the Ash. Negate, can't finger the Imperm. We're now down to seven disruptions here. All right. 
We have wanted Seeker to bait the Ash. We had not taken that bait. You will not eat my Ash. We're gonna max C as you'd have a monster on the field. We're gonna be fingering the C. Now, Call of the Grave being eaten by the C is great because Unchained has a bunch of other cards that do not want to get fingered. The Yama could get fingered, the Shavara could get fingered, the Shayama could get fingered, any of the Unchained monsters could get fingered. So let the, let the Maxi eat the uh, Call of the Grave, that's good. We have Diablo Star now activating, getting negated by Valor. Negate. And what do we have left here? We have Caesar, Caesar, Rage, Escape, and Abominable Unchained from the deck. Five disruptions and the ash. So let's see, let's see. Nightmare Phoenix will be forcing out the escape of the Unchained. But do we just let it get destroyed face down? It only triggers if destroyed while face down. Ash is negating. <laughs> you got, yeah, well, yeah, that's what happened. You're trying to draw a card here. I don't think so. Negate. Your draw, thus negate your destruction. High King Caesar negating the effect of Flame Burst to summon two bodies from the graveyard, and just like that, Unchained has defeated the best deck in the meta. Holy moly. It only took a turn one hand of one card starter plus four hand traps. Probably the, the most perfect hand you could draw, right? Good job. Congratulations. Just like that, I think we'll be seeing you in the top 16 now, yes? Victinium, top tier snake eye player, both of you great. Let's go. We have Rescue Ace versus Morisaki. Starting off with a special summon unicorn, Rise Heart banished from the deck here. We have Birth to Reborn, a monster that was banished. Then we're grabbing another unicorn. We already performed our normal summon, so the Birth is not gonna be helping us there. And let's get to it. Wanted Seeker grabbing a Diablo Star. Sure, we're not gonna be negating that. We have Black Witch. Black Witch being summoned by discarding a Black Witch, setting up a subversion to push that Baron to floor into the back, or we're gonna use the Fenrir to banish that Diablo Star off the field as we subversion attempt to push the Baron to floor into the back row, negate. Now, we have used up Fenrir, we used up Baron to floor. All we have left is Nibiru, and we're on summon number one. So let's speed this up. Ash, summon number two, add the Poplar, Poplar activates, summon number three, grab ourselves another Subversion, which we return back to the deck, Link Karibo, summon number four, Poplar equip into the back row, Ash, send to summon from the deck, Flame Burge, we are now on five summons or more. We're gonna be making a Nightmare Phoenix on summon, we could discard a card and chain link block the Flame Burge from being negated by a card like a Ghost Bell. As we take out that Birth, Birth, be gone. Ash Reborn, come forth. We have our main play, the Rescue Ace Hydrant. Activate to grab the Turbulence, but Nibiru is gonna stop it. Maxi's gonna be a draw two in response to that Nibiru play. Come to me, Pot of Greed. Bonfire and Nibiru. Bonfire is gonna be grabbing an Ash, which we already used up our normal summon with. Contain is only activatable if we control a Rescue Ace. So it's useless, we got nothing. No Promethean Princess, it's banished with Unicorn. No backward disruption, we do have just Nibiru. So we activated the Ashoka Pillar, grabbing a Makonko Water. We're on summon number two, summoning a Makonko from the deck to then exceeds into a Torpedo to draw a card. Summon number three. Summon number four. Summon number five, we can now Nibiru whenever we want. Torpedo into the Fortress. Fortress is now searching for the Armored Exceed and the Exceed's Armored into the Dark Knight Lancer. We're gonna use the Armored Exceed to equip onto the Dark Knight Lancer, making it untargetable now. Recycling the Armored Exceed in the graveyard back to our hand. Makonko Fire Dance to summon from the graveyard our Hugh Lee and summoning the opposing player's Flame Burge onto the fields. We are now using, if an equip card becomes equipped to a monster, you can attach, you can attach one monster your point controls to this card. Non-target attached because an equip card happened. Let's go. We're gonna steal the Flame Burge. But the Flame Burge is gonna steal the Baron to floor. It is negated though, because of the fire dance, summoning the monster being negated, sucking up that Flame Burge, non-targeting, and now we Nibiru the field. <laughs> 
That's a really cool interaction. You get Dark Knight Lancer, and then whenever you equip something onto anyone, it will then trigger to non-target attach something as a material. Ash grabbed the Poplar, Poplar trigger, special summon. We're on summon number two. Nibiru is also gonna be impactful here. Anima to suck up that token. Poplar equip into the back row. Anima suck it up. The original attack is zero. We're now making summon number four. Hida, get reborn from the graveyard. Come forth, ha, Ray. Wasn't well, that five summons? We're just gonna wait with Nibiru because that, this is not a field. Who cares about this field? But by waiting, the Apollo USA is now here. I think we were on five summons, right? It was five summons? Unicorn special summon, Apollo USA negate. We're not spectating the Nibiru event, but there's a lot of Nibiru in this duel here. Unicorn being triggered, Apollo double negating, negating the search, negating the effect to look at my extra neck and banish. Negate, negate. Contain is still dead. Goodbye to the Apollo USA. Open field here. Let's get swinging. As we now armored Xyz equipping the torpedo onto the unicorn. Now, does the torpedo give the unicorn additional benefits or only when equipped onto an Xyz? If you are equipped to anyone, that monster is untargetable. Okay. Unicorn cannot be targeted. Can't target with subversion, so we're pushing a take Tomborg into the back row. Wait, I thought you can't be targeted. Huh? If the equipped monster is an Xyz monster, you can't be targeted. But it gains the other effect if it's not an Xyz monster, which is cards can't be activated when it's battling. So, okay, it's not that good. Get pushed back. All right, nice. Ohime, search our deck for the ceremony, discard our max C. Ceremony special summon the Ohime, chain our max C in response to it. We just have to deal 5,700 damage here. Impulse could special summon in response to a monster activating on the fields. So why, uh, we're just gonna wait. Quantal, the Power Ranger Xyz. Quantal is gonna be popping a back row, taking out the contain. 1800 to the face. Rivalry equipping from the deck, a double-edged sword for double battle damage as we use the full armored Xyz within the battle phase to make our Zeus, because we battled. <laughs> just like that. Battled with an Xyz, so Zeus is now a valid Xyz summon. Lethal damage. Holy moly. Zeus summoned in the battle phase. Very nicely done. All right, Morisaki is gonna be special summoning our Terror Top into the Take Tom board. We got the Torpedo draw card. We're not gonna be ashing that, that'd be ridiculous. But ashing the effect to search with Fortress is maybe something that's worth ashing. And the armored, full armored Xyz will be able to summon the Dark Knight Lancer. We're gonna super polymerization, fusing with the field to make a Garura to punch for 3,000. Uh, I think that's the end of us, huh? Well, Wanted Seeker could add a Diablo Star from your deck or graveyard, thus the bell can negate, thus we finger the bell. Negate. All right, let's game three. No hand traps for Morisaki. Adding our Diablo Star. Discard Subversion to get out our Black Witch to grab an original Sinful. And just like that, now to you. Rescue can rescue the turbulence from the grave. The alert can search our deck. We have extinguished, which we already said, will pop, but it has an additional effect because of Hydrant. The monster we pop cannot activate for the rest of the turn. So let's say they get Ha-Ray out early, then they reborn Ha-Ray from the grave. It is negated. And Contain will just fully contain the monster. Can't attack, is negated. We don't negate this, do we? Chain Impulse in response to the effect to search the deck, but we're negating. Okay. Impulse could summon the... I think it's the helicopter that gets summoned, and then if you search while the helicopter's in the field, you draw two, discard one. Finger the max C in response to the effect of special summon from the deck. Negate. Contain, contain the pillar. Pillar cannot be used for linking, exceeding, synchroing, cannot attack, is negated. And we have a fire engine from the deck. During the end phase, we're going to grab an airlifter from the deck here. Okay, we're not alerting our turbulence onto the field yet. 
fire engine into attack as we follow up with our bonfire search of the poplar poplar on being added activate to summon itself onto the field searching our deck for a subversion we have rescue rescuing our turbulence from the graveyard we have airlifter which i think will search for the field spell yes we will rescue ace hq will be able to return our engrave or banish rescue ace cards back to the deck to then be reset with turbulence as we now make an apollo usa Get ready for this deck is going to be super powered when the new cards come out. Which uh, maybe by the time this is being posted on YouTube, it's already out. Grabbing a card after returning four back of the deck. Ran it's random draw. You don't grab the hydrant. Setting up of the turbulence. The contain, negate, extinguish, get popping. Additional summon with the rescue ace HQ. 11,000 damage on the field. It's only boosting up your monsters if the opponent controls a monster. But it's enough for lethal damage. Very well done done for rescue ace nice 